We're live. We're live. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with thelandgeek.com. And I'm with, having a virtual cup of coffee, David Benalis, shh, shh, the Facebook whisperer. David and I are professional land investors. I've done over 5,200 land flips since 2001. And I make the argument on my podcast, the best passive income auto podcast, and the art of passive income auto podcast. We have the ultimate subscription model. We have the ultimate side hustle. It is a one-time sale. You get our money out within the down payment or within six months of the down, and then you get this passive income without any of the traditional real estate headaches. David, no renters, no rehabs, no, no renovations, <laughs> no rodents. It's no onerous hit. real estate legislation because we're not dealing with a tenant. We don't have to worry about Dodd-Frank, the SAFE Act, or RESPA. Basically, we shuffle paper and we make money. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. I left my coffee mug in the other room. Ah, horrible. Who does coffee talk without coffee? Me, this guy. <laughs> that, that's, you know, and that's when you're the Facebook whisperer, you can kind of do what you want. <laughs> hey, Spike. Spike, what's up? Look at that baby. How's that's Detroit, cute. man? So David and I were talking before Coffee Talk about Bryce and Craigslist listings. So what's going on with that, David? Yeah, yeah. They reached out to me right now. Um, I'm not sure if they're on this call yet. Uh, just hit me up, like asking me about what my strategy is for Facebook. And maybe it's because I've got some kind of reputation that I'm good at marketing, that I might have some kind of super secret knowledge on how to leverage Craigslist or Facebook or any other platform. Uh, no, like there are no secrets in this business, right? Like I just do the basics and do them often. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, Danielle Dieball. She likes the shirt. <laughs> Everyone loves that shirt, Mark. Yeah, this is from Bearland family. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, and Dave and I had a, a podcast yesterday, which isn't going to air for probably months and months with um, Molly Pittman from Digital Marketer. And you really, when it comes to marketing, you kind of have to get down to the basics, right? Which is, what is it that is going to benefit your customer and speak to them in their language that is going to you know, improve their life? So maybe for some people, it's going to be fresh air. For other people, it's going to be the asset right? It's going to be the long-term investment. It's going to be the legacy investment. For other people, it's going to be the recreational opportunities. Come in a place to come together with your family. For some people, it's going to be freedom and no restrictions. So when you're crafting your marketing, you want to hit these points and you want your, your headline to really have a benefit right there. There's Bryce. There's Bryce. So Bryce, does that help? I hope that helps. Yeah, I mean, essentially what I picked up from yesterday was we're selling the after and the before, right? We're making them very aware of their current problem and right. we're selling a solution. Everything right. else is kind of fluff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're the per kind of person that likes assets mm -hmm. that, um, you know, wants to have a place to maybe bug out to if you're a prepper, um, you know, somewhere that you can, um, you know, get away from it all. You're sort of own, your own, like, you know, little private compound, if you will. <laughs> I've got a piece of land for you, right? And I make it irresistible with my pricing. So since I've been doing this since 2000, I've never been stuck with a piece of land. Um, they all sell. And, and really, and Dave and I talk about this all the time, we make our money on the buy. You've got to buy it right. You've got to buy it. 23 cents on the dollar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It, you make a lot buy, it has that lot. margin of safety. And right. Yeah. Worst case, you're going to double your money. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mimi Schmidt. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mimi. Mimi is uh, coming to the boot camp in <clears throat> Scottsdale. David, awesome. you'll be there. I'm going to be at every single one of them. I, yeah. I'm just going to go just to hang out with you guys. Like, I, I say this over and over again. I mean, Tate even alluded to it uh, on the the roundtable that came out uh, last week. We just go to hang out with each other. There are very few people like us in the world, Mark, or that are in this business and are you know really actively you know pushing what is possible as far as an automated business. 
and a lot of people just don't get it. So, man, I'm going just to hang out and be among like-minded people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's 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 really you know the the value of a boot camp is not just a training, but you know you get to rub elbows with Mimi, who's been to like I think Mimi, how many <laughs> how many boot camps you been to now? Like like oh, you know goodness. four or five, and you know find out how she's running her business. Right? These are really you know smart people that are doing things in a way that you know most people don't do. I mean, these are accomplished people that are running you know, a great land investment business on the side and to rub elbows with them and see how they're doing it. It becomes so much more real. Just that yeah. one little tip, that one little nugget can move the needle uh, in your business. Uh, here's Connie White. So what's Connie, Connie got? Scott's, Scott Todd's headline from Face <laughs> from Fight School last night. You can see in your front yard and no one will see you. <laughs> there you go. Oh man! There you go. I love it. That's Scott some good marketing. Out with the, uh, the best headlines sometimes. Connie, how's flight school going? There's yeah, the, as far as headlines go, like almost it seems like the worse they are, the better response you get. Like if you just put "I have land," for some reason that gets traction versus <laughs> you can pee in your front yard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't get it. Like it's. It, yeah, headline king for sure. Right. See, five boot camps. Five we, boot we, camps. we have to do like the the SNL robe. Like we have to get like a maybe that's like a, like a robe. Like five. I think yeah. nine's got like nine. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't know. Tom Willis is like up there. That's great. The headline king. Loving it. So, um, what other questions can we answer for you guys? What's what's going on in in the uh, the market right now? So what I did earlier was I put out a um, a question on the mastermind group. So first of all, boot camps are great, but if you really want to be plugged in the community, you got to be a part of the mastermind group. Like we archive the calls on there between the coaches and the one-on-one students. Man, so many, so much value there. And so we're gonna have a call later, eleven thirty Pacific. You know, it's worth every single penny to be in that group. I've learned so much from there. It was worth yeah. it for me. Yeah. If you want, if you want to learn more about the community, flight school, the toolkit, all the all the ways that you can start, you know, automating passive income because we're like ninety percent automated now. Go to www.thelandgeek.com forward slash training and book a call with uh, David or Mike and talk yeah. about it. Happy to talk to people. I just talked to someone from India this morning. Gave him the no, rundown. Was that, was that Rohit? Rohit, yeah, yeah. Great guy. Um, he already has two businesses. He is looking for a third that will actually be able to scale. And you know, just broke it down how you can do this business internationally. I know someone else on the Facebook group or message the bot. They're in Western Australia. You know, how could I do this business model from here? And you know what? Some people might see it as a challenge, but I think it's a benefit because you're kind of forced to build systems from the beginning working internationally you, yeah. you don't have the luxury of you know picking up the phone yourself or you know there are some services but you just you definitely have to delegate from the get-go all right um colvinder 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 sing sing hello probably another international student right there yeah i mean i i think so i i actually did a uh an rei uh, classroom like Mike Hambright does that REI classroom, and I did this yesterday. Um, probably it's not going to come out until October, but I actually talked about how you can do this from any of the where in the world. And there's about four things you need. The first one is an, an inexpensive laptop, right? Yeah. The second one is a, a internet connection. The third one is a virtual mailbox. Um, the one that I love right now is you're using it too, David. It's oh, I love mailbox. It. It's just an app. I love it. Um, here, I'll write this down www.phoenixdigitalmailbox.com. Let uh, Catherine know I referred you. Absolutely. Really inexpensive compared to everything else out there. It's like one flat fee. So yeah, they scan your mail, right? So you send out your mail via LG Pass or click to mail, right? doesn't matter how you do it. And then the offers come back into your virtual mailbox. You scan them on your app, right? 
you outsource your due diligence, you go through the entire flow, and then you can sell it online. No problem. Now, if you're selling it on terms, really simple. The problem becomes when you do a cash sale, mm -hmm. you're in Europe, they're in the United States, and now you have to notarize a deed. It's not really a problem because basically you can use Simplify and you can use, uh, let's say you're, you're, you can give someone in your family or a friend that's a trusted advisor, maybe your attorney, yeah. limited power of attorney. They can sign for you and they can record the deed via Simplify and that's it. That's all it is. Yeah, I mean, that that's really, I mean, it's FERPTA, right? So 15% income tax. Well, no, no, uh, ten, yeah, 10% 10 is withheld oh. to the United States, and then okay. you have to pay taxes in your country, right? So, um, you know, a lot of people who are international investors, um, I always want to warn them, just because you own U.S. land, it will not increase your chances of getting a U.S. visa. That is actually a myth. Right. Oh, I'll just buy some U.S. property. It's going to be so much easier to get a visa. It's not. Um, it won't help you in the slightest. So, but it is a good investment. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so you money, what's, what's get a traveling mailbox? Lawyer. Say that again. Traveling mailbox. I never saw that traveling mailbox. Yeah. Before I got into Shipwright, I was looking into iPostal, and at right. face value, it looks like a great deal. But then you warned me. Um, oh, they're going to charge me to even put an eyeball on my letter. <laughs> no, it's unbelievable. They nickel and dime you for everything. So you got a, the monthly fee, then a fee for everything, scans. And uh, I mean, you know, Phoenix Digital Ma Mailbox will charge you for only two things. If you forward mail mm -hmm. and if you deposit a check, that's it, right? If bad. you're using GeekPay, then you this is all done automated anyways. Right, you get your down payments on GeekPay, and then you get your recurring payments on GeekPay. So, yeah. um, and then we just integrated with Authorize.net as well. Uh, Mark, do you have any other tips for Craigslist other than IP addresses and shorter text? Because I'm not joking, 99% of our ads that we posted yesterday got flagged. Holy cow! Um, Craigslist is a beast. Craigslist um, is a beast. I, I, you know, Bryce, without seeing exactly how you posted, and I, I'm assuming you're using posting domination. Um, I don't know. I think that's a better question to go into the posting domination group to Scott Todd. Um, we talked about this last week on the on the uh, mastermind group as well. I have a feeling something went went wrong with your email. Something Craigslist didn't like, and they just kind of like ah, whatever this guy does, we're gonna flag. Um, Cynthia has a great question. When you say 90% of this business is automated, what isn't automated? That's well, a great the 10, question. The 10% you can't automate is customer service, right? Closing, you can't automate. Um, following up, you can't automate. The, uh, the initial marketing templates, I think it's better for you to do than delegate that out. And then you can delegate out that you can't automate. So there's managing certain, your VAs, managing your VAs. You can't automate unless you're going to have a VA that's actually going to manage your VAs when hopefully you get to that point. Oh yeah. That's, that's pretty advanced. But even yeah. then like selecting a County where you want to move the business. I mean, you're still the captain of the ship. So that's still something you're doing. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, Cynthia's like, you can hire salespeople though. You can hire salespeople. Absolutely. So technically speaking, you know, except for the management of the team, um, the entire business can be automated, right? Uh, and then you can actually have it completely 100% automated if you just want to have a weekly call with your manager who's running your entire business. Um, once you get to kind of that scale, I'd say, you know, usually you're going to have that at around, I don't know, seven figures. deals a year. Yeah, I mean, if you're doing if you're doing seven figures, that's where you should be, really. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to be at that point. Yeah, I mean, you, you'd want to be. Yeah, you'd want to be absolutely, um, and you'd have the the revenue to support it. You'd have the deal flow to support a sales team. Um, you'd have the revenue to support uh, a VA managing your VAs, and you you could do it. Uh, Mimi has a question. Maybe remind us what the no-go Craigslist words are. What it comes down to, I believe, is 
trying to get them out of the ecosystem or looking like a scam. So if you you have a URL or yeah, um, I mean Scott has a good list of the the words, right? Um, posting domination. <laughs> Just kind of take the easy way out there, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Uh, posting domination. Uh, Sammy's got a question. Hi guys, going in two months. Going in month two since I signed up for Toolkit, I'm starting to get return mail now with no forwarding address. What resource do I use again for tracking the owner down? There's two resources. Um, we use binverified.com. I think it's just a little bit prettier. So binverified.com. And we have a whole system with our VA who goes in every day to our actually to our app and does it. Um, and then goes into LG Pass, and we remail when we once we get the better address, or is it Intellius? Intellius. Uh, w dot Intellius, which is what Scott Todd uses as well. So Intellius dot com. Now I will tell you that Lob just came out with an API. So if you're using LG Pass, they will actually scan through uh, the magic of technology. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing, but they have a partnership now with the Postal Service. Um, they will scan your list first, and then they will tell you which addresses are bad before you mail out. That so is amazing. We are integrating that into LG Pass. Um, this oh, week. that's great. Oh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Money. This business well. just gets better and better. I got in at a perfect time. Yeah, I, the, I got the technology is crazy. <laughs> Next thing you're going to tell me, uh, yeah, we're about 98% automated. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 nutty. It's nutty. Sandy's like nice. Any other questions? Any other questions? Um, if you're just jumping on and you don't know who we are, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with thelandgeek.com, and David Benalis, the Facebook Whisperer. We are professional land investors. Um, check out the Art of Passive Income podcast for more information. When is flight school? June seventh. June seventh. Sandy's June 7th. That class is full, correct, for June? Yeah, uh-huh, full. So June class is full. We are filling up now for July. If you want to learn more about the July class, go to www.thelandgeek.com forward slash training. There you go. Um, get on a call with David or Mike and learn more. Cynthia, I loved the roundtable from last week about pain points. Thanks for doing those. They keep me motivated. Yeah, I, we're, we're really, I mean, you can sell Cynthia like, <laughs> We have a good time on the round table. And, and <laughs> like last like this yesterday's round table was really fun. Um, because now I'm calling Eric Eric Jot Not Pro Peterson. <laughs> I don't know that joke. You um, gotta listen to the episode like from the, two weeks the, ago. The, yeah, the, the episode before, but um, <laughs> I Cynthia, by the way, I uh, in all in all humility, my tip of the week yesterday was unbelievable. Like I'm I'm really now the sky was out, so I'm, you know, nothing against Scott because, like, but I really had a great tip of the week last week uh, for yesterday. So uh, I gotta listen next, to so next Tuesday, when you uh, when you listen to the podcast, you'll be like, "Wow, Mark dropped the mic again." I came up with an air table, and then tomorrow <laughs> it too. it's not as good as air table, but it's really good. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'm I'll diving in. I was uh, that's gonna be my CRM air table. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. So if you're not using air table, check it out. Um, the automation is crazy. Bruce Anderson learned a lot from the latest roundtable. Thanks so much. Awesome, Bruce. You know, I, yeah. What do you guys want to? What do you guys want us to talk about next week? Let's do like a coffee talk, like agenda for the next roundtable. Like, give give us some topics. I like it. I like it. So this morning, I put out a question on the mastermind group. What are the common objections you get in the sales process? And we got a, a lot of good responses. Maybe we'll just turn that into a, a roundtable topic. Oh, like, look at Cynthia Trafafi. One day when I'm successful like the rest of you, I have to come on the roundtable. You know you what, Cynthia? That's it. You come on next week. Here, <laughs> I'm going to send you an invite right now. So, Cynthia, it's just um, – here, I'll just send you an invite. She's already had her podcast appearance. She had her podcast appearance. Um, <laughs> so I think I think Cynthia could talk about – you know, a lot of different topics. I think one of the interesting topics that Cynthia could talk about that we don't have the round table is how she bifurcates the business between her and Mark, right? I think I think 
Cynthia is on the buy side, Mark is on the sell side, and how they work together doing that. I know, like, I wouldn't be able to work with my wife. There's no way. Like, I'm a control freak, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, no, Sean and Rachel do it, and apparently Sean and do Rachel it so do well. It as well. So I think, I think you know, kind of doing more of a deep dive into that, and um, you know, how do you get your your significant other involved in this? How do you get your your spouse involved in this? You know. Um, how do you how do you find two people that are really motivated and, and aligned on okay, you know, because look, let's face it, if I if you go to a party and say, hey, I'm a land investor, people like their eyes glaze <laughs> over, right? Yeah, exactly. And so, oh, and so Mark is the automation expert as well for Cynthia. Um, it really helps, even like from other podcasts when they talk about husband and wife teams in any business. If you figure out what you're best at and you stick to that and you create boundaries within the business, it pretty much, I think that sums up how you work as a team. Although what I'm curious about is, do you guys just stop working at a certain time of day and then don't talk about work? Or do you talk about work and then, you know, watch a movie at the same time? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what's so funny is like when I was growing up, my grandparents worked together. and, And like they were old school, like... You know, like my grandpa didn't like anybody except for like his family. Like he was kind of just like mean to everybody. <laughs> but and like and so like in the office he was stressed and he was surly and he's screaming at everybody. And I'm telling you, he would scream at my grandma, yell, and they'd yell back and forth, right? I mean, wow. fighting. And as soon as they locked that door, they would walk to the car hand in hand. Oh man. It was <laughs> unbelievable. Like oh, wow. Like nothing happened. Like, okay, we're leaving that there. Now we're going wow. home. And it's time to like enjoy. Like Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Clock yeah. in and clock out. They clocked in, they clocked out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dave, wow. you you work in a family business. Yeah. I mean uh, you your dad probably yell at each other. You guys probably walk out like I mean or do you or, or does it fester? I don't know. Uh, like, I mean, you got to understand. I grew up in a very Latino culture where stuff festers and we don't communicate our feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, I mean, my own therapy has helped a lot as far as guiding r- resolution <laughs> within the right. family. But it's it's me, my dad, my uncle, my brother, and at times my cousin. So there's a lot of dynamics there. And oh man. Put it this way, I'm grateful this will not be a family business. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's 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 stressful because there's so much that goes in on it, right? Totally, totally. Um, you know, and, and the you know this is the problem. Like with my, I see with my own kids, I say to my own kids all the time, like, you guys owe me nothing, right? Like you didn't ask to be born, so mm. you know everything I'm doing for you, I want to do for you. You don't owe me. Like you have a debt to me, you can't <sighs> pay, basically. <laughs> So I'm not going to hold that over your head. Right? <laughs> My job is to basically make you come an independent, nice human being that goes out in the world, it's a productive human being, and hopefully you make the world a better place. That's all my job is. That's it, right? That's, You're not yeah, entitled to anything else. That's about as <laughs> so, good a parenting job as you could do. Just yeah. you know, create more good human beings. Yeah. So Cynthia's like, we're constantly talking about the business. It gets exhausting. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that was – I yeah. mean – that was on top of my head. I was like, you know, if my wife and I were doing this together, like as, as it is right now, like I, I'm really bad at creating boundaries at home. Like I'll hop on my laptop once in a while or I'll get a text about an alert I got to follow up on. And so I'm learning to put in boundaries. And this last week I did a much better job, you know, playing with my son and, you know, talking with my wife. But I couldn't. I mean, what else? I mean, <laughs> I talk about work when I get home. Like, <laughs> I mean, we should have a land geek uh, marriage retreat. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because I, I I struggled like when I first started this business, and I quit my job and I'm working from home. I had a, you know, a baby. I had a six month old, right? And so yeah. you know how it is. Totally. Mom's tired, and dad's home. And it used to be, you know, you'd have to pack the, the diaper bag and the bottles and the diapers and all that. It would it'd take a half hour to get out of the house. Well, yeah. I'm home. She's like, I'm going to run out. Can you hold the baby? And I'm like in front of the computer. I'm looking for deals. You know, I'm marketing and doing my thing. And then I was like, oh, okay. 
<laughs> sure, I'll hold the baby. And next thing you know, she's out. She comes back. She's super in a good mood. And I'm super stressed. I didn't get any work done for like an hour. <laughs> right? And then so then I'm working nights. And like so that there was no like really like it took years for me to figure out the boundaries because I had that one part of me. It was like, look at look at the freedom flexibility I have as a yeah. dad. What a gift this is that I can do this. And I can go on a Tuesday morning and go to the park with my family and just hang out while everybody else is working. And then there's another part of me is like, wait a second, I need to be working. <laughs> right. <laughs> and like, so it's, it's a very, it was very tough. Mimi Schmidt, Mimi Schmidt. I need some parenting advice, by the way, <laughs> my 16 year old is really, really having a difficult time this summer. Doesn't have a job yet. Mimi. Mimi's got amazing children. Um, she's an amazing mom. I'm getting my, this is, this is the great thing about the Langy community. I get parenting advice. <laughs> yeah, we so. you teach them how to you know create a business, and they can uh, teach you how to parent. <laughs> Seriously, I like it. I like it, it. It takes a village. It takes totally, a village. Totally, totally. Yeah. It takes a village to do this business. I don't know how you could do this business on your own. Well, it's, I tried. It was really hard. I really did. I mean, that's that's why I made million dollar mistakes. Yeah. See. Yeah. Mimi's son's got a job. For months, maybe my wife's been like, "No, you need a job. You need a job. Get a job. Get a job." He hasn't had a job yet. I so started working like, when I was seven years time. old. <laughs> yeah, I've been in the workforce for twenty-four years, Mark. <laughs> oh man, I, I wonder how I'm gonna, you know, structure it when my kids are old enough to potentially work for me. If I'll even go that route, knowing what a family business looks like. I don't know. I think I think my, about, my advice is never hire someone you can't fire. <laughs> my dad told me that once. <laughs> but he hired me. <laughs> See? He's probably like, I can fire David. <laughs> He'll be fine. He's been working since he was seven. <laughs> All right. We're going way off topic here. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, what so what is, what is, happens? questions do we have? And do we have topics for next week's roundtable? I think, uh, I think um, Bruce said it was a good idea. Just common objections. Common objections. Received. That's okay. That's a good one. Yeah. Here, let me write this down. So next week is the sixth. That's when we're going to record our uh, roundtable. So I'm going to put on here. Uh, let's see. Where is. Uh, so, okay. I got to make a note. All right, so round tables, so common objections. Yeah. What else? I'm sure we could think of something else before then. Okay. Um, all right, common objections is a good one. Yeah. Um, my deal flow is crushing right now, Mark. I, I spent oh, yeah, let's talk about deal flow. I'll tell you what my deal flow looks like right now. How, cool. What's going on I, with your deal flow? I spent last month building some systems on the buy side to get myself out of it. I am pretty close, maybe another month of more systems building, but a big piece of it is the virtual mailbox. So you're pulling yours out, I'm pulling mine out. You used to do uh, opening the mail for Coffee Talk once right. upon a time, maybe like what, four or five months ago. It was great. I loved it. And then you're like, oh, I don't check mail anymore. And then, <laughs> but yeah, we can open our app. So I had a, uh, well, here's a good example, right? One acre, go ahead. One, one acre, acre in Nevada, four hundred and thirty dollars. They signed it, sent it back. That's a deal. That's a deal. That's a deal. What are you gonna sell it for? Um, those I sell for seventeen fifty cash or like twenty six hundred on terms. It's cool, me. So the money actually moves faster for me on smaller deals. Well, I mean, Zana's been making a living. Uh, oh doing these smaller little deals. Um, yeah, he's been I mean, buying they all, for, they all add up. <laughs> yeah, buying for one fifty, selling for nine hundred. Yeah, it's it's crazy. He yeah, he just sold. He just deal he did yesterday. He sold, he bought for one fifty, sold for two thousand. Um, <laughs> not bad. So Sandy's like, I can't get past mailing. No deals yet. No marketing. I guess my offers are too low. Can you talk about structuring offers for better response? I'm so glad Sandy is in flight school. When does yeah. Sandy start flight school? June 7. 
Okay, so Sandy, you're all these. This is a deep question that goes way outside the realm of just a land geek roundtable, um, because we really need you to get the foundation of number one county research and number two getting comparable sales and doing the math when you send out your offers, right? And then tracking your response rate. If you're not getting a three to five percent response rate, you know that you're off on the initial offer and the initial research. Yeah. That's really what it is. And you kind of have to wait six to eight weeks to get that accurate metric. Right, right. Mimi, do you find ag land or residential land has more neighbor letter interest? That's a really that's, interesting, that's an question. interesting question. I've never done any side by side comparisons. I haven't either. I've never even, I've not, he's, Mimi's such a, a metric geek. Um, yeah, I mean, the zoning and the counties I work, it's kind of, it's AR, agriculture residential, across the board. So I don't really have comparisons, you know, where I work, because uh, it's all kind of you can do whatever on this land. Yeah, <laughs> Mimi, I don't track that. That's a good question, though. Um, she's probably writing some code right now to track it. <laughs> some analytics. That's funny. <laughs> well, if Mimi, I, just... I haze because you know we love, we love, we love. We love. <laughs> um, any other questions? I've got a jump off very soon to have my embrace the suck call with Daniel Dieball. That call is amazing, Mark. That call. Like the brain power of you and Danielle together. Like literally I can just like watch this and like become a millionaire just by watching you two. The land geek lab. Like, <laughs> now what can we break? Yeah, yeah. It's oh yeah. So nine and I are getting an Airbnb oh. Thursday, Stains of Friday. One of the the little things we're going to do is 100 bad ideas. We're going to come up with 100 bad ideas for this business. Wow. And something out of that might turn out pretty good. Um, this is something that Sean Rickman taught me. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, in an engineering school, they start with bad ideas first and let those, you know. I mean, Tim Ferriss talks about this too in uh, Tools of Titans. Yeah, James Altucher, this is like what he's known for is come out with 10 bad ideas a day. It's like it's like a muscle. It's like an idea muscle that you just you you know a habit. So, so that's that, awesome. I'm sure. I, you know, my brain is full of bad ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that all day. I'm sure. All right, there's Obi. Oh yeah. Good morning, party people. Obi, you're late to the party, man. I know you can watch the replay though. It's you can watch good. the replay. Yeah, and it, if anyone watching the replay, you can. Oh, it's probably too late because they probably would be at the end of the replay. But you can always, you know, leave comments and I'll answer them throughout the day. Yeah. So don't forget to schedule your call. Get your questions answered with David or Mike. Learn more about G uh, July Flight School. It's coming up. Um, learn more about the toolkit. If you don't have the toolkit, just learn more about the community. See how we can, you know, create the ultimate side hustle for you and uh, create more freedom in your life. Because even if you get your passive income, even, even $2,500 a month passive, like imagine just having your mortgage paid, right? Oh, yeah. Every month. That'd be that's that moves the needle. That's how uh, Chris Pritchard started. He's like first started with gas money, then it became uh you know, grocery money, then it became uh mortgage money, then it became mm -hmm. like mortgage money plus vacation money, and then like it just it keeps ballooning from there. And he has, soon, a, he has a chicken coop in his backyard now. He got a chicken coop. <laughs> Yeah. For fun. <laughs> Here, yeah, here's Danielle. James Autcher recommends coming up with 10 random ideas a day to build that muscle. It's helpful. See? There you go. Yeah, Danielle does random ideas. I do bad ideas. <laughs> She's got nothing but good ideas. <laughs> yeah, Ben Clark, 2K passive is massive. It really is. I like it. it really I like is. it. I mean, you know, 10K is, is, I think, a good, really, and a very realistic mm -hmm. sort of expectation and goal. But 2K moves the needle for a lot of people. Yeah. If yeah. anything, 2K allows you to buy a property no longer using your own money. And that's when it really takes off. Yeah. Why should we use your own any, money anyways? Sell your note to me. Yes. <laughs> buy your note. You take the money. You redeploy it. You make a huge totally. return. If you totally. don't know what I'm talking about, you got to go to boot camp to find out about the note business. Doing this business without money. Yeah. Thelandgeek.com forward slash boot camp. Get on the waiting list for if there's cancellations for um, August boot camp in Scottsdale and uh, start actually booking now for the October boot camp in Orlando. 
We'll be there in Orlando. If you're planning to go in October, don't wait. I've never seen a boot camp sell this fast. Like, it's probably going to sell it just as fast in Orlando. So just book now. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll post a link here at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I hope everybody's getting value out of these coffee talks. Dave and I are having a good time. I, I could just do this all day, Mark. I could, I could that. do this all day. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I can see Danielle right now kind of like just waiting. Like, Mark, let's Come go. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop hanging out, David. We got work to do. <laughs> So, um, time to embrace the suck. yeah, I want to thank Obi, Mimi, Sandy, Derek, Kurt, Cynthia, Bruce, Bryce, Connie, Covinder, and um, everyone else for jumping on. Spike, leaving a comment, we really appreciate it. Um, all your comments are helpful and useful. Um, and we just love seeing you guys every week, we really do. Um, that's why we do it, honestly. So thanks, everybody. And uh, I did keep notes for next week's uh, roundtable discussion. So we'll get that. Sandy, I get so motivated after these coffee talks. I can't stand it. could be the caffeine, too. It probably is. It probably <laughs> is. Awesome. Chuck, right. Litzman, thanks for being on. And um, we'll see everybody next week. Job well done, Mark. Thank you, David Benalis. You're welcome, Mark Bernalski. The Facebook whisper. Shh. All right. <laughs> Let freedom ring. See you guys. Let freedom ring. All right. Bye.